Hi everyone, I'm Ann Vu, a product manager on the Exchange team. We're going to take a few minutes to go over some of the integrated email archiving features that are available within Exchange 2010. But before that, to set context, let me go over some of the challenges that you've been going through which helped influence our design for some of these features in Exchange 2010. So the volume and importance of email has continued to grow over the years, and so has the need to systematically archive this information. Within Exchange 2010, we've integrated some of these archiving capabilities to help customers such as yourself to better address these needs. I've invited Ian Hammeroff, a team member of mine, to discuss some of the improvements we've made with Exchange 2010. What are the experience changes with Exchange 2010? Sure, so I think it starts with the fact that we have a handful of features, one of which is called the Personal Archive. Okay. Now this is a specialized secondary mailbox that gets provisioned and associated with a user's primary mailbox. Mm -hmm. And this allows you to give them an alternative location to store historical email data. And what I really like about our approach is that this just shows up in Outlook and Outlook Web App just like any other folder or a PST file. Okay. So it's very easy for your users to interact with their archived data in the same fashion they do with their regular data. You know, to search, you can tag items, you, you can even create folders within your archive to organize your information. Or administrators can create policies that automatically move data from the inbox to the user's personal archive, but the user doesn't lose touch with it, so it's very easy for them to continue working in the same way they've always have been. So you mentioned the experience being similar to PSTs. I hear that IT pros often struggle with PSTs and managing PSTs. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, so one of the reasons why we've seen such a, a large proliferation of PSTs is because quite often exchange environments are deployed with small mailbox mm -hmm, quotas. Yeah. And as you know, one of the great advances we've done in Exchange Server 2010 is to build in technologies that allow you to deliver larger size mailboxes at much lower cost. So now with 2010, customers can deploy larger size mailboxes and with the personal archive, they can create a location, a separate location that's user accessible to take that PST data off the desktops and out and about on the network and bring it back into Exchange. You know, we find in many cases that customers have almost 90% of their email out of the control of the IT department. In PSTs. In PSTs, on file shares, up in SharePoint sites, maybe even forwarded to uh, personal webmail mm -hmm. accounts. Mm -hmm. you know, if we can provide a, a platform in which that mail data can be brought back into Exchange, now the IT pros have tools like retention management mm -hmm. and built-in discovery capabilities so they can preserve and easily find relevant mm -hmm. communications. So that data is searchable. Exactly. Yeah. So you've discussed a lot of the great improvements we've made with Exchange 2010, but I heard we've even made more improvements based on customer feedback with Exchange 2010 SP1. So can you tell us a little bit more about some of those improvements? Yeah, I mean, and as you mentioned, we got a lot of great feedback from customers after, uh, since launching Exchange Server 2010 in November. Uh, we heard some great ideas from customers on how to make the Exchange archiving and retention discovery feature set fit more closely to their immediate needs. Mm -hmm. And in Service Pack 1, we've addressed a large number of those. Uh, if you take a look at some of the top ones, uh, probably one of the biggest ones we heard a lot of feedback on was the ability to separate the personal archive mailbox from the primary mailbox. Okay. You know, customers have asked us that they would like to implement separate storage strategies for, say, least frequently accessed email that's stored in the, in the personal archive from their day-to-day -day most current email yeah. uh, stored in the user's primary mailbox. So I'm happy to say in Exchange Server 2010 SP1, we have now added support for Yay. having the personal archive and the, and the primary mailbox uh, provisioned to separate mailbox uh, databases. Mm -hmm. So what this means is now you can use different storage hardware, uh, they can be in different database availability groups, so you can oh, have perfect. different uh, SLAs and different backup strategies. So we really believe this will give customers a lot more flexibility in how they implement their archiving solution that's built into Exchange Server 2010. The second one is Outlook 2007. We got a lot of great feedback saying that customers would like the ability to access the personal archive from Outlook 2007. Okay. Now I'll be the first to say it, there is a lot in Outlook 2010 that makes the upgrade very worthwhile. Definitely. Things like the new conversation view, mail tips, mm -hmm. uh, even just the whole set of retention management capabilities we've built yeah. into that release. But we also recognize that customers have Outlook 2007 in place today, yeah. and often the email server gets updated before the clients do. So n noting that customers have an immediate need to get those PST files mm -hmm. off the desktop and get it back into IT control, we are now enabling support for the personal archive mailbox to appear in Outlook 2007. Mm -hmm. 
That's great. What else are there? There's some great things we're doing on the discovery side to even further streamline the process of conducting search requests. Uh, three in particular uh, is one is a new search preview. So okay. it, with Exchange Server 2010 at RTM, when you created a new search query, we do two things. First, we quickly check the Exchange search indexes to find all the relevant data. Yeah. And then the second part is to copy it to a designated discovery mailbox. Mm -hmm. Now, customers have said to us, we'd love the ability to do some early case assessment or try out different search parameters and see what would net out of it. Yeah. But in the past, they'd have to wait for the search to complete with that copying. Mm -hmm. With the new search preview, you can get an estimate on the number of results that would show up in the search results mm -hmm. set, including some keyword statistics. So okay. you're able to get a good sense of, are you, uh, are you finding what you expect to find? Mm -hmm. you know, understanding your exposure, if it's an early case assessment scenario. Yeah. And then, of course, once you've figured this all out, you can easily click copy the results sets to the designated discovery mailbox, and then that process uh, works through. Okay. Now, when we actually do that copy move, we've also added another new feature called search result deduplication. Oh, perfect. So when you actually do the copy into the discovery mailbox, you have the option of checking a box that says copy only one instance of a message. So this is really useful when you may have uh, multiple mailboxes being searched as part of your query, and the same email message was sent to every mailbox. Mm -hmm. So instead of having to have all those messages to then go through and review after your search, or hand over to an outside counsel, yeah. you now can re reduce that down to uh, a more meaningful set of items. And then lastly, while you're actually reviewing items in the discovery mailbox, in Outlook Web App, we've now added a new uh, message annotation capability. Oh, OK. So this is useful for as you're stepping through the results to set. Add notes. To add notes, yeah. to classify things. And what's great that these notes are searchable, and they, they, don't, they, they really run alongside the actual messages. So when you export it or if you print messages out, you don't have that information in there. So it's a great way to get a better handle on your post-search workflow. Yeah. Uh, which is, all, again, all aimed at helping driving down your costs in doing these processes. That's perfect. Thank you, Ian. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks, everyone. And a special thanks to Ian Hameroff for discussing the archive capabilities within Exchange 2010. If you want more information on it, please check out Ian's white paper. We'll be posting it on the Exchange team blog. Thanks.